Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Mana Cave. My name is Ed. My name is Travis. And we are continuing on with our 2019 Brawl Deck Showdown. Travis. Yo. We, as of, well, you guys will have waited a little while to see this next episode. We are just fresh off of the last match. I would prefer not to talk about that. Which? Very fresh. Spoilers ahead, folks. Spoilers ahead. So if you don't want it spoiled watch the previous video watch that's the only way because eventually we're going to mention uh, at, later on as well too who won that one but if you haven't watched the previous one go watch it now because i'm about to spoil it travis sadly you lost the last one yes. lost. fairy schemes advances to the finals of the first ever 2019 brawl deck showdown and you it, the deck you were playing which was savage hunger which is a been, solid deck. Would be my first choice if I got to pick up all these yeah. decks because they all have, have been? they all have arcane signets. Oh, okay, so I like I like Jund colors usually. Yeah, I like and Mardu as well. It's a solid deck because I did get a chance to play with all these decks uh, when they were on Arena, and it just you just you had a rough you had some rough luck when it came to draws and stuff like that. So yeah. uh, possibly now, a bad call on the keep, maybe down to five. Who's to say I did what hind I did? Hindsight. Two twenties. Yeah. You know how the saying goes. Because if I won, I'd be like, yeah. "Haha, sucker! I get five lands <laughs> plus one non-land." Yeah. This time around, though, I think you actually are the odds-on favorite because the deck you're playing is the Knight's Charge deck, and that I thought was one of the most powerful ones because specifically because there were so many games I could win with that deck without ever needing my commander on the battlefield. It just runs so well as a knight tribal deck all on its own. And it is an expensive commander. I mean, the commander is really good, especially if you got equipped knights attacking, and it makes the equip cost zero. Yeah. Like, it's just great. I, I, hate, I hate equip costs. They're <laughs> so, always so high. So do I. Well, but way back in the day, they, yeah, they used weren't. to be. Yeah. Um, and I forgot the name of my deck. So it's called Wild Bounty, which is a uh, green, white, and blue. Uh, deck so i don't have i mean i've seen this deck go off but this deck requires a bit more of the puzzle pieces to fall into place sometimes before it can really start doing its thing so against a more aggro we aggro we deck i had the worst time saying that about sound like I, I i talk like a baby uh more of an aggro e deck uh like yours i find this deck can be can pretty pretty lacking so. especially in a heads up scenario i mean in a more than one opponent scenario Aggro generally not great. Yeah. I mean, there yeah. are cards that can save you in this deck kind of thing. Aggro but... a lot in Commander just gets you, makes you a target. Yeah. Like a lot of the time, right? And so... then a board wipe happens and you're like, well, I did stuff. <laughs> so go home and tell your kids that that happened. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we already rolled Sea Ghost first. Now uh, I get to go second because I rolled a two. Um, and as we've been talking right now, our opening hands will have been shown. Or are being shown, sort of thing. Now, Travis, did you want to read off your commander? Sure. My commander is the lovely Sir Gwen, hero of Ashvale. It's a Mardu, so it's a black, red, and a white, plus three of anything, so six. Mana for 5-5, five, five, with Vigilance and Menace. And whenever an equipped creature you control attacks... Oh, I thought it'd be knight. But no, whenever an equipped creature you control attacks, you may you do, do draw a card and you lose one life. Also, and this is what I love... Equipment you control has equip knight zero. So yeah. that's it. Her actual uh, card draw thing for, for attacking does not require it to be a knight, but uh, equipment I control has equipped knight zero. And so, I think pretty much everything in that deck is a knight, so chances are. And, and as well, too, that counts, that counts for itself. Yeah. And you have equipment which can give things haste. So it's entirely possible that thing hits the battlefield and you can just attach everything and swing in right away. It's crazy. Yeah. Um, that's the power of that. And, and Menace. Menace is. Again, menace yes. is really overlooked a lot. Sometimes. Yeah, yeah. In in draft, especially, it's it's menace can be just like back breaking. <laughs> the other other it. flying. Yeah, you know? <laughs> exactly. Right. Uh, so mine is called either I'm not sure the pronunciation if it's Chulane or Shulane. Uh, I'll I'll call it Chulane. Chulane, teller of tales for two, a green, a white, and a blue. You get a two four human druid. He's got vigil. He's got vigilance. He's got vigilance. And whenever you cast a creature spell, draw a card. You Then you may put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield. I can also pay three, tap him, and return target creature I control to my hand. To its owner's hand, I should say. So, brought off the commanders. We've got our opening hands. Both of us are starting at seven. Yep. Nothing to do but start. Black Nothing to do 30. but start. I was about to bow my head like you're going to show your hand, but we've already done that. So, old habits die hard. I will start with a Scoured Barons, enter the battlefield tapped, and can tap for black or white. I also gain a life. Nice. 
Very nice. You're winning already. Let's see your uh, two two mana cost and thing. Uh, I'm going to play Thornwood Falls. Enters battlefield tapped. <laughs> There's a battlefield to gain a life. I'm going to tap it for green or blue. Tying it up, Travis. Tying it up. It's a comeback. Uh, pass it to you. Untap. Draw card. Play a mountain. Uh, I'm going to tap for red and tap for white. Okay. On turn two to cast the Sky Knight Vanguard. It's a flying 1-2. Whenever attacks, create a 1-1 one, one white soldier creature token that's tapped and attacking. Yikes. It's flying, though. It is, uh, it's got flying. Taps me out, and I pass back to you. Okay. I will play... I'm going to play a forest. I'm going to tap for blue and green, and I'm going to cast... Biomancer's Familiar. It's a mutant 2-2. Two, two. Activated abilities of creatures you control cost two less to activate. This effect can't reduce the amount of mana and ability cost to activate to less than one mana. Uh, tap it, and the next time target creature adapts this turn, it adapts as though it had no plus one plus one counters on it. So adapt will go over where it's it's basically a mechanic where you pay a certain amount and you can put those counters on it, but once it has counters on it, you can't adapt a creature. So, uh, Travis, that is my whole turn, and I now pass it to you. All right, untap, draw. Hmm. I say, hmm. Yeah, I guess I'm going to play this card. Uh, it's the land called Tournament Grounds. It's an uncommon from the Throne of Eldraine. I can tap it for just plain old colors mana, but I can tap it and add red, white, or black. Spend this mana only to cast a knight or equipment spell. Yes. That land is made for that deck. I think quite literally. I, can I, you get that I in regular feeling, ones? Yeah, you can do. You can. You can do. You can do, Travis. You can do. You can get that in regular packs because uh, I've actually drafted that card before. So it's really nice if you're playing like white red knights in a um, in a draft deck and you want to sort of splash for a couple of those really nice uh, black knights. There, there, there are a couple ones which are super cheap to get out there, but they're super useful. So yeah. Okay, I'm going to go to combat. Sounds like a plan. Okay, so I'm going to send in my Sky Knight Vanguard. Flying yes. One, one, two. Whenever attacks, create a one, one soldier creature that's tapped and attacking. And my soldier is tapped and attacking. And I'm going to put the two, two in front of it. Fully okay. expecting my two, two to now die, die. Unfortunately, no, no. Oh, <laughs> but good, good. Now there's my soldier, soldier. <laughs> Can we both stop whatever the heck it is we're doing? <laughs> uh, I will uh, DJ. <laughs> tap for white and tap for anything. Oh, is it a uh, certain equipment with flash? It is actually. Yes. It is an equipment with flash, but it is not a knight. Oh, it is equipment spells. It didn't really <laughs> matter. I just thought I was doing it wisely. It's shining armor. It has flash. When shining armor enters the battlefield, attached to target knight you control. Yes. Okay, so apparently I can't do that. Well, you could attach it to your flyer if you want. I could, but I think I have a better play that I'll do after combat while my soldier <laughs> dies. Because I'm not gonna, I was hoping okay. to save him, but okay, he's gonna die. So combat damage goes through. Yeah, I'm right. gonna take one, putting me back down to thirty. My biomancer takes one damage, and your soldier dies. First time playing his deck. So. <laughs> and yeah, I think it would have been just creature. But it's still fine. Not. It's still fine. Uh, so I guess what I will then do is tap that for white, and tap that for any color. For Ancestral Blade. When Ancestral Blade enters the battlefield, create a 1-1 one, one white soldier creature token. You can't tap that for white, can you? For equipment. Oh, is it for equipment or knights? Yeah. Oh, okay, never mind. That's, that's no, no, where no, I was wrong. Fine. I was, I was yeah. like, oh, I can't. Yeah, I don't think I've ever used it See, for the actual equipment cost. So. And, and here's a, a tip to you. I'm actually not going to even use this later on. Oh. Potentially. <laughs> I just wanted to show off. Don't reveal that. Don't reveal it. Well, I mean... Sure, I'm not going to... It's better to have on. that up, though, just in case, right? Yeah, so, yeah. and I'm also oh, nice. showing off. So, so an equipment or a knight for very, very, very well done. So two mana to cast that. When it enters the battlefield, create a 1-1 one, one white soldier creature token and attach Ancestral Blade to it. So equip creature gets plus one, plus one. So it is now a 2-2. Two, two. Uh, and equip creature gets plus... Oh, uh, pardon me, equip cost is one. Okay, cool. So I can't even flash that out onto him either because it just says knight. But... So if if I... Think of this correctly. In theory, next turn, I can just play this as a equipment and then spend the three mana, which I couldn't do next turn, to then attach to regular thing. Yes. But when it yeah. flashes, enters as knight. Okay. Yeah. Now, this is a knight, right? So you yeah. could actually attach it to that right away. So, yeah. 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 But I'm leaving that up for the uh, spell. <laughs> Pass back to you. Pass back to me. Okay. Yeah. 
All right, I am going to play a planes, and then I'm going to use. Uh, I'm going to bring out my on an adventure token here, a little Ooh. way station for uh, for when you send your characters on an adventure. And I'm going to do something I've never actually used to to proper effect before. I'm going to tap for one green, and I'm going to uh, use the Rose Thorn Acolytes Adventure. It is seasonal ritual. Pay one green, add one mana of any color. So I'm paying one green to add one white. And then I'm going to tap this planes and this for whatever, and bring out the Forbidden Spirit, or Forbidding Spirit. It's a 3-3 Spirit Cleric. When it enters the battlefield, um, until your next turn, creatures can't attack you or planeswalkers you can tr control, unless their controller plays two for each of those creatures. So that is until my next turn. So that's not a static effect, it's not going to last forever, but it is going to last until my next turn. Um, so now I am going to pass the turn to you. Okay. And tap. Draw. Play a plain old planes. Plain old planes. So, I pay two mana to attack with him. I create a soldier that's tapped and attacking. Mm -hmm. Do I have to pay two mana for that? Because it's... Uh, <laughs> when it enters the battlefield until your next turn, creatures can't attack you or a plane's walking control unless their controller pays two for each of those creatures. I mean, I'm not choosing to let him attack. He's just going out there doing his thing. As far as I know, and uh, we, can, we can have people let us know in the, in the comment section, because it's attacking, it's not... It's, you're, you're not it's, this triggers when you go to attack. Yeah. So I think because it's already attacking, it sort of circumvents that. You'd have to pay for this yeah. and this, but I think the one that's already tapped and attacking, I don't think you have to pay for. Well, then I think what I'm going to do... Now, this has Flash, but I'm going to cast it pre-main phase because it's going to give this thing Vigilance. Okay. So that one we mentioned before, Shining Armor, Flash enters the battlefield, attached to target knight uh, you control. Target creature gets plus one, plus zero, plus two. So now it's a one four. Okay. Uh, and uh, yeah, the creature gets plus two. It has vigilance. So now it does have vigilance. Yeah. Okay. So there's that, you know. And that was a white from that because it, it's equipment. Then. I mean, I attack. I do all of one damage and create a one one who gets, in theory, in theory, eaten. But I do one damage. Yeah. And I'm the aggro deck, right? <laughs> you are indeed. I will pay to go to combat. Sure. Swing in? Swing in. Okay. So that, that doesn't have vigilance, right? It does have vigilance. It does have vigilance. Because this gives it vigilance. Oh, that's right, too. That's yeah. right, too. Yeah. See? I'm glad so you're on the ball. So one forward vigilance. This dude's coming in, too. Are you going to block that guy or what? Like, yeah. We <laughs> <laughs> coming. We coming. Come I'll block on the familiar, though. No. All one, right. Three, three. So he does hit the bin. I Hit took one damage, so I'm down to 29 now. And I pass back to you. Pass back to me? Okay. Uh, I'm going to play an Azorius Guildgate. Enters the battlefield tapped. I can tap it for white or blue. Um, I'm then going to pay three to bring out... The Rose Thorn Acolyte from its adventure. It's a 2 3 Elf Druid, and I can tap to add one mana of any color. Still don't have anything to deal with your flyer. He's only picking you for one, though. He's not the <laughs> most like aggressive flyer in that sense. Um, I'm just going to. So he's just a 2 3, a 2 2, and a 3 3. That's still a pretty impressive board, though. Yeah. Yeah, but. But. But, but, um, I'm going to move to combat. Okay. And I'm going to swing in with the 3-3. Three, three. Okay. I'm going to block with my 1-4. I forgot about, yeah, it's, like, it's Vigilance. I don't know why, it's, like, we went over this. It has Vigilance, so, okay, yeah. So then that'll bounce off of that, so. Yeah, okay. that was silly. I don't know what I was thinking. You attacked with it, therefore you cannot possibly block with it, but wait. Okay. <laughs> So that was a silly mistake on my part. I pass the turn out to you. Right. Untap. Draw. Yeah, I think I'm gonna. I think I too shall go on a 
brief adventure. Ooh. So I'm going to I say brief adventure because I think this is how I want to do this. I'm going to tap for th three. Uh, one black, two of anything to cast uh, Foulmire Knights. He's a zombie knight, but I'm doing his profane insight adventure. I draw a card and I lose a life. Okay. So he's going to go on his little adventure over there. Yes. His here. other thing is a he's a 1-1. One, one, oh, I even have an adventure area for you. He's a 1-1 one, one death touch for one. Which is nice. So I'm going to lose a life down to 30. Draw a card. Hmm. Okay. He's done with his adventure. <laughs> Tapping this for a black <laughs> to cast a knight. And there's a 1-1 one, one death touch. Excellent. I'm going to go to combat. Yes. So I'm swinging with my 1-4 Vigilant Knight. That creates a soldier. Soldier. <laughs> which I will put my Biomancer in front of. You ate my other two brothers. <laughs> <laughs> so dam damage goes through? Damage goes through. I'm down to 28. Okay. Uh, that's my turn. That's I, your turn. I passed you with my Death Touch and my 2-2 two -two Dude Dude. <laughs> Okay. Draw. I'm going to play a planes. Um, I'm going to... I'm going to tap one white, and I'm actually going to use this as a sorcery. Uh, it's Flower and Flourish. I'm going to use the Flower part of it. Search your library for a basic Forest or Plains card, reveal it, put it into your hand, and then shuffle your library. So I'm going to search my library for... I'm actually going to search for a Forest, right? Yeah, Forest. There we go. Basic Forest. Shuffle up. Cut. Indeed, sir. Forest goes into my hand. <laughs> that is Vigilance. That is Death Touch. Don't want to be swinging into that quite yet. I can not cast my commander because that requires five and I got one, two. Oh no, I got five. I got five. I can do that. I can cast that. I can do th I can do stuff. You tap one mana, didn't you? Hmm? you I did, yeah. Tap. But I got one, two, three. Or one, two, three, four, five. Because remember, I can tap him for one mana of any color. Oh, yeah. good end. So I could bring him out. Do easy, I want to, though? Easiest way to start getting value off is get them out early. I'm going to... Instead, I'm going to pass the turn to you. Okay. Untapping. I'm drawing. Yeah, I guess this is what I'm going to do. Red, white, and one of anything. To cast the Sky Knight Legionnaire. 2-2 two, two, Flying Haste. I'm going to tap for two blue. Countering a spell? A green and another green. To cast the Frilled Mystic. I hate that card. It's a 3-2 Elf Lizard Wizard. Awesome. With Flash. And when it enters the battlefield, I counter target spell. So he hits the bin. Yes. Uh, what I'm going to do... So I'm going to tap one to equip, move the equipment over to him. Okay. So he's going to become a 2-5 Knight of Vigilance. Yeah, makes sense. Makes sense. Okay. <laughs> I am uh, once again going to go to combat. <laughs> okay. Flying for 2-5, create a soldier. Uh, which I will put a 2-2 two, two in front of. So, I'm, But I'm taking two this time. There are some cards in this deck that say when a creature you control dies, something cool happens. Um, that, that, <laughs> I don't have any of those, those cards out yet. That taps me out, and I pass to you. I'm down to 26. Okay. I will... I'm going to play Tranquil Cove. Enters the battlefield tapped, and I gain one life, so I'm up to 27 now. Land is nice. <laughs> I'm going to then tap for one, two, three, four four, five, including a green, a white, and a blue. And I'm going to bring out my commander now. So, uh, yeah, Vigilant, uh, two, four, and whenever I cast a creature spell, I can draw a card. And I may put a land card from my hand to the battlefield. Uh, you've got a one, one death touch. Um, two, five, flyer, and a one, one, soldier. Uh, 
You've got a frilled mystic that I just hate. Yeah, this thing can pretty much... Yeah, so there's no point. I will just pass the turn to you. Okay, untap. Come on, big money. Oh, for the love of people. One, two, three. One black, one white, one everything to cast Mortify. Oh, okay. So my commander's going to go back to the command zone. And it has been destroyed once, so it's going to cost me two more if I want to bring it out. Now, I do have the mana for that, but I would completely I am just me. stuck on mana. It's driving me out. I can't do more than one thing a turn. It's yeah. driving me nuts. And I have so that, is, that is probably one of your biggest pet peeves in all of Magic, is when you only have the mana to do one thing per turn, because I know you like doing a lot of things per turn. Or even two. <laughs> a second thing, other than... <laughs> it is driving me nuts. Even, <laughs> even in Commander, when Travis has actually got the advantage when he's winning, if he can still only do one thing per turn, it drives him physically nuts. Nuts. So, yeah. So I'm yet again going or to combat. Or mentally nuts. I don't know how you can trust someone physically nuts, but yeah. Physically nuts. Going to combat. 2-5. Creating 1-1 one, one attacking. Uh, I'll put the 2-2 two, two in front of it. Okay. So I've taken 2, though. I'm down 25. You're slowly chipping away at me because I still haven't been able to deal with your flyer. You dealt my other flyer. That would, <laughs> they would have done 4 damage at this point if you didn't counter it. I passed 2. Okay. My, my, my. So much potential just to start popping off. I can just get 1. More land. Okay, so I'm gonna draw. Um, I'm gonna play a forest, but I had to take that commander before I got value off it. Like, and I'm gonna tap. I can't believe I'm using this on this. I'm gonna tap for seven, and I cast Meteor Golem. Oh. It's a three-three Golem artifact, and when it enters the battlefield, destroy target non-land permanent at opponent control. I gotta take care of your one-two flyer with that. So, which is frustrating, but it is what it is. Um, so now, before you have a chance to equip those up or anything like that, I'm going to move to combat. Okay. And uh, you know what? I'm actually going to swing in with the entire team just to get some some stuff going here. Oh, and I got the golem, but the golem can't attack. He's got summoning sickness. Now, the frilled mystic has done its thing. Yes. This thing can still... Can I read this thing again? Oh, yes. Yeah. Five months familiar. Activated abilities of creatures you control cost two less to activate. This affects... Can reduce the amount of mana and ability cost no less than one mana. Next time a creature adapts its turn, it adapts so it had no plus one counters on it. I mean, adapting is not going to be huge, but even that makes his But it'll thing. give him a discount of, yeah, it only costs him one to use his ability. Yeah. That's also a lot of damage I'm looking at taking. Hi. Yeah. I think I'm going to pop that in there because... I mean, the three powers are nice, but... Jeez. So, eight in total you'll take? Down to 22. And then my Biomancer Familiar goes to the bin. Okay, so now I'm going to pass the turn to you. Now, even again, I'm at the point where I don't think... Oh, I'm and one... that dies as well, too. Right? Oh, yes. Yeah, death touch. Okay, one soldier who's not a knight. <laughs> I don't think one land would make a difference. Ugh. I feel bad. I really do feel bad for you. I hate games that, that go like this, so... Like... Not, I mean, it's still, it's still a ways away, right? You're, the... the you know, the life totals are still pretty close, but still, yeah, it's... it's um, That, I guess. That's all I can do is that and that. That's a three to attach that to. Jeez. That's, that's a lot. Uh, tapping for a black and a white to cast the Corpse Knight. Oh, okay. It's so only a two-two. Uh, whenever another enter creature... Whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, boom. Each opponent loses one life. I mean, I would love to have had that out with my Sky, sky Guard, because it didn't matter yeah. if they were dying, because they were just, you know... Interesting thing, there was actually a card that came with that deck, which was, hello, please open this before playing, because it was in a little, little envelope. And it says, read before playing, the Brawl deck includes a misprinted version of the Corset 2020 card, Corpse Knight. Corpse Knight's intended power and toughness is 2-2, which is what that is. Uh, but the copy included in this deck was mistakenly printed as a 2-3, so... And then somehow the misprinted 2-3 ended up in another deck, but we won't get into that because, um, yeah, that was just silly. Tapping one to attach, attach the Ancestral Blade. So now it's a 3-3. Three, and three. a 1-1. Okay. One, one. Okie dokie. And that pass to you. My turn? Yeah, because I can't equip anything else or cast anything else. Okay. Brawl is not my favorite format at this point, just because... <laughs> <sighs> Okay. Just because. And I even drew an extra card off my Profane Insight, which was not a land, obviously. I'm going to... 
It's going to cost me seven to get out. One. Actually, before I do that, uh, move to combat. Move to combat. That's a th three three. That's a now? three three. Yep. I'm going to swing in with these three. So three two, three 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 three. Okay. I may regret it, but I will block there and it will block there. Okay. So uh, these are going to trade, correct? This is going to jump. Uh, it's going to jump, and then you're just going to take three. Yeah. So okay. I drop down to a nineteen. Okay. And then for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I'm bringing my commander back out onto the battlefield. That's going to be my whole turn, and I pass it to you. Once again, I'm so far behind. Even if I get that land now, it's not going to. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Come on. Still uh, no land? Still no land. Tap two for the Inspiring Veteran, who was nice a little while ago. Yeah. Team. Other knights, which are none, get plus one, plus one. I do feel bad. I mean, there is board wipes as far as I know, right? So this could this could swing around still. But yeah, that's... But yeah. I think the board wipes cost five, so yeah. you would still need another land. So I'm having to basically just attach and chump. At least I'm taking one creature out per turn in theory. Yeah. So I paid one to equip Ancestral Blade because I can't even do the Shining Arm because that requires, requires three to equip. Yeah. That's my turn, sir. It's your turn? That's my okay. turn. Alrighty. On tap. Okay, I'm going to tap for a blue, a green, and one of whatever. I'm going to cast Risen Reef. Uh, whenever Risen Reef or another elemental enters the battlefield in your control, look at the top card of your library. If it's a land, you may put it into the battlefield tapped. If you don't, put the card onto the battlefield, uh, put it into your hand. However, whenever I cast a creature spell, I draw a card, so that's going to trigger on first. top of that. Yeah. Uh, so I do draw first. Can you stack your triggers at that point, or no? Because this actually has to hit the battlefield. Uh, so okay. it's going to basically this is going to trigger before it hits. Into... I have to I have to go through that, and then this hits the battlefield, and then whenever it enters the battlefield, I can look at the top card of my library. So if they were um, both cast triggers, then you could stack them, or if they were both into the battlefield, but since it has to cast and then into the battlefield, you can't stack. Yeah. 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 yeah, basically that's yeah that's how that's how it works. So whenever uh, it enters the battlefield under control, look at the top card of my library. If it's a land, I may put it onto the battlefield. Uh, if you don't put the card onto the battlefield, put it into your hand. So I'm going to put this into my hand instead. Um, then I will. That's that's a three three now. It's a three three. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to. Move to combat. Okay. And I'm just going to swing in with the Frilled Mystic, which is a 3-3. Three, three, or 3-2, three, sorry. I hate to keep doing it, but I can't keep taking damage, so i got to put my awesome <laughs> card there. Okay. At least I'm able to pump my 2-2s two up to 3-3s three, to make them tradable. <laughs> I will then play a Simic Guildgate, which is going to enter the battlefield tapped. And I'm going to pass the turn now to you. Bloop, bloop. We all know this is going to happen. Guildgate. Oh. The Boros Guildgate, which can tap for red or white, enters tapped. No life gain. All right. And I think I'm... Well, I'm not out of uh, nothing options. I can empty my hand almost. Two for Marauder's Axe. Two... For Crystal Slipper. So Marauder's Axe's equipment costs two of anything. So uh, Equip Creature gets plus two, plus zero. Equip cost is two. Sorry, you could have actually responded with no, counters, no, no, but no, I don't no. think you're countering yeah. either of these. Uh, the other one for one white net, one of anything, so I had the mana. Uh, is a Crystal Slipper, which is new to Throne of Eldraine, which I was actually kind of excited about this card, if I could have had a chance to kind of have two left over mana just to play it and then have it come into effect later, which on this turn I do. <laughs> uh, but even then, it's uh, so one red, one of anything. Equip creature gets plus one, plus one has haste, but still has an equip cost of one. But, I mean, if I if I do hit my extra land drop next turn and I'm alive, which is yeah. not a given, I can play my commander and... Foom, yeah, put all those... For yeah. free, and it'll have haste then. So let's see if that happens, or if I do something else. Uh, over to you, sir. Okay. That, <laughs> On your end step, I'm going to pay three, tap him, and return Meteor Golem to my hand. 
because you know you already haven't had a hard enough shake of this game to begin with. Yeah, at least that uh, costs seven, though. <laughs> but it's also a, the only removal spell I think you have, really, sure. other than maybe a frog spell or a fight spell. Play an island. Uh, I'm actually going to tap for uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, bring out Golem and blow up your My haste, crystal your slit artifact. Or? Yeah. Oh, the one that was kind of counting on making at least an impressive play. Um, it's not an elemental, so that doesn't trigger the Risen Reef. I'm going to move to combat now. Yep. Uh, swing over that, which has vigil- Vigilance. And then I'm going to... Um, I'll swing with both of these, actually. Right. So it's a total of five? Total of five, yeah. Drops you down to 14. And I will pass the turn to you. Nerdy. Untap. No, you wouldn't be a land, would you? You wouldn't be a creature either, would you? This is an... I'm good, I'm good. Uh, whatever you are, it's going to happen. Sure, <laughs> this is this is impactful. Okay. I'll wait and do anything for the uh, mace of... No, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I don't need to cast that. We don't need to cast that. Because okay, no, no. I have... I can tap this for black. There you go. There we go. So I'm going to tap for two black. Okay. And... F- these to cast a creature. Oh, okay. I do actually have one. I, I've, I've honestly put him all so far back in my mind that I was looking to top yeah. deck something a little more impressive, but uh, he is Sir Conrad the Grim, who's actually potentially a very good uh, commander and commander, or a mono black sacrifice deck. So for two black and three of anything, he's a 5-4 human knight, and whenever another creature dies or a creature card is put into a graveyard from anywhere on the battlefield, or a creature leaves your graveyard, certain Conrad the Grim deals one damage to each opponent. There's a lot to say, yeah. but again, if he was out, say, earlier when I had those knights dying all the time, or the soldiers dying all the time, oh, that would have been so sweet. And he's got a secondary ability as well, too. Yeah, uh, for one black, one of anything, each player puts a top two, the top card of their library into the graveyard. So yeah. he can kind of fuel his own thing by putting cards in the graveyard. They don't have to die, they just have to go to the graveyard. That card can be amazing in draft. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. There's another card, which I can't remember the name of, but it's one in one black. Put any number of creature cards from your graveyard on top of your library and then draw your card. So if you have that out, like sort of late game in a draft game, and you have that other card, yeah. uh, you can basically take all the creatures that died, put them back onto your uh, top of your graveyard, and that triggers for every single one of those creatures. That card, I draft that card quite heavily uh, in Throne of Eldraine drafts. So. And in regular old command, like Steve should put this in his mono black deck. Yes, yeah, Steve. It- Steve has been playing um, vicious, yeah, the same mono black deck for a long time, but he's been slowly upgraded and making it more and more yeah. brutal over time. So, because now I'm wondering what the the wording on Bajuka Bug to say target player, or target opponent puts or exiles their graveyard. I can't remember which, which one it is. Because if, if you have your whole graveyard, even you'd be like, oh, I'll just do that, and all like fourteen yeah. creatures leave, fourteen damage to each opponent. Yeah. Because they're leaving your graveyard. They're going to exile. Yeah. That still counts. Not that just, still counts, yeah. I mean, forget any kind of milling you can do to yourself. If you can get rid of them all to each <laughs> opponent. And then there's... Like, oh, it man, is target go. opponent, though. It is target opponent. Is so, it? No, no, not that one. But oh. on, um, like, for, for Bajuka Bug, Bug, yeah, it's, it's one opponent? specific opponent, yeah. Yeah. It was one specific player. One specific player of their graveyard, yeah. No, I'm, I'm, this is how irrelevant this game's going. Um, whenever another creature dies or a creature card is put into a graveyard, it doesn't matter then. Yeah. Right? yeah. No, you it doesn't matter. No, 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 oh, yeah, I'm not points. saying it. I was just trying to remember yeah. what the rule is. It wasn't like it, what, you don't play it and, and remove everyone's graveyard. It's yeah. just one graveyard, but still, it can do a lot of damage. And I always love something that does something against board wipes. <laughs> yeah. Because you can wipe the board. They're all going to. Yeah. Anyhow, I'm impressed with that card. I would have impressed <laughs> with them about four turns earlier. And then Crystal Slip from. So, yes, uh, I can't equip anything to him. He's a 5 4, and I pass two. Okay. On your end step, I'm going to tap for two, and I'm going to play Grow Spiral. Uh, draw a card. I'm going to put a land card from my hand into the battlefield. So I'm going to draw a card. And I do not have a land card, so I can't put one into the battlefield. So I think you're still covered. Untap. What was that card I tried to play? <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe. And draw. I'm going to play a planes. <laughs> Travis. You're going to bounce them and replay them? Can yeah, you actually gonna, do all that? I'm going to pay three. One, two, three. Tap him. Bounce Golem back into my hand. And then tap for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 
cast golem, blow him up. Now, it's, it's well too, it's when... Another another creature. Another other creature, okay. Yeah, so he doesn't even get... You know how many things I've had that haven't got a single trigger? Like that corpse knight and... <laughs> Move to combat. Yeah. Swing in for three. All right, so I'm only down to 11. Oh. And I thought I had a shot in this game. The way thing, the way my opening hands are going, I thought I had a shot. It's okay. This is the thing as well too. If you hadn't been stuck on on four lands for like the entire first eight turns, I don't know what turn it is. We we track turns during editing, but not during play. Um, yeah, this would have been this would have been way different. So, well, you got you, a pretty you, sweet comp. You got a board lock. Now yes, you your uh, pretty too. much. Yeah, that's the thing right now. I've, I've kind of got the board lock because every single turn I have the mana too. So if you can get rid of him or him, I would have to cast him again. I wouldn't be able to bounce him back for for a turn. So you might be able to. You might be able to. <laughs> Um, anyways, I will pass now the turn to you. I already mortified him. What more do you want? <laughs> Untap. I know, I imagine. Oh, well, I get to play this card at least. Uh, I'm going to tap two for the Arcane Signet. Oh, there we go. Yeah. No. The super expensive common card, which is only found right now in these decks or the collector's packs, I believe. So next turn I can cast Mega Commander. <laughs> uh, then I might as well put some equipment and hope I live to cast Mega Commander. So for three... I will cast that Mace of Valiant. Valiant? Valiant Mace of yeah. Valiant. So equip creature gets plus one, plus one for each charge counter on Mace of Valiant. It doesn't enter with a single one, but no. he does get Vigilance, but he already has that. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, put a plus one, put a charge counter pardon me, on Mace of, of Valiant. And the equip card cost is three. Man, that in like a token deck. <laughs> yeah. Was that empty the waste, put X11 one, one white soldier creature tokens? Like, play that, attach. <laughs> All right, that's 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 my turn. That's your turn. I mean, you can blow up either of those if you want next turn. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I'll be doing that. Um, draw. Okay, I'm gonna tap for one, two, three green, and then one, two. Is it three, the Raz four runners? Five for the end and raise four runners. Yeah. Uh, it's um. 7-7 seven, seven boar creature with Vigilance, Trample, and Haste. When it enters the battlefield, other creatures I control get plus 2, plus 2, and gain Vigilance and Trample until the end of turn. Yeah. Then and then I'm going to swing with the team. That'd be a little more than 11. Yeah. 7, 5, yeah, it's a lot. Yeah, it's a so. lot. And they get Vigilance too, don't they? That's the... Uh, I, I, feel, I feel bad. I think you've had a rough run with the Brawl deck so far, because the first one, which by now you guys would all have watched, uh, you, you had... Uh, an opening hand which was mostly land because yeah. you figured, hey, this is good because then I'll be drawing nothing but gas. And in this one, you how many lands no, no. did you start off with? I you had, started off with a decent amount. I right? had three and I had my three. It was just, covered. but it was just a matter of not drawing in in however long. Now we've all been there. Yeah. Like anyone who's played Magic has been there where it's like that, and that's a nice mix. A three land opening hand is a nice mix. You don't really want anything that's really more or less than on that. An, on an aggro deck, I had four. I think three of my other four cards were two mana each. Yeah. But sooner or later, you run out of those cards. And and I don't think I missed a land drop the entire game. Now, another thing to keep in mind as well, too, is that for this this particular deck to really start going off and doing these combos, I had to have the commander out there, and I had to have three mana in order to use his ability. And then for, like, doing the Meteor Golem combo, it's like an yeah. additional seven to get him out there if I want to do it all in the same turn. And like I said, I didn't miss a land drop. I Are don't you? think I gained so much extra. We even drawing cards off. I wasn't even drawing cards. It occurs to me now. I, like... I just realized that that's going to be mentioned in the comment section for sure. Is that every time this came into yeah. into play, I should have been uh, a land out if you drawing had a card and putting a land out if I had one as well yeah. too. Didn't even do it with the the end raise forerunners either. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it just it's it's it, funny because I when I read that card, I'm like, yeah, it's a good third ability, but those first two, yeah, so play a creature which you want to do in a lot of decks, especially decks I play. And you get a draw card <laughs> and potentially ramp. I'm like, I don't need to read past that. It could have said uh, lifelink, death touch, vigilance, uh, plus five, plus five if you control three lands. It doesn't matter. Draw a card and just for playing creature? Yeah. That's all I cared about. But no, apparently that other ability he's, yeah, he's, might come in handy. He's pretty great once you have like a decent amount of mana. He's pretty great to begin with, but he does cost. I mean, and you killed him once as well, too. So I did have to spend uh, seven to get him back out there at one point. And there was a point where I was considering... When I uh, swung in with the Frilled Mystic, I was considering bouncing it back then and then having that in my hand instead. But I knew I was building up to enough mana where I could I could start doing that, that with the Golem instead. And I thought that might be the better choice, especially when I was having trouble 
That's a um, tough call because yeah. no matter what I play. <laughs> yeah, that could be especially nasty because then I can flash it out, then I can bounce it back. Technically, like you know, well, yeah. technically I could. There's a chance that I could have it in my hand, cast it, bounce it back the same turn, bring it back, and then send it back out again. So all for depends. Yeah. Four, eight, nine, ten, eleven mana. So, yeah. but yeah, it's it's tough when the, uh, I really thought your deck was the odds-on favorite, and if. If it had been able to be a bit more aggro, then it, I don't think I would have been able to. Because you, you were able to get a flyer? quick start. Yeah. Um, the other one, one of the other small things as well, too, is that me being able to simply get that 2-2 two, two out early on was shutting down the yeah. extra soldiers being built. So you were building these extra soldiers, but I was able to sort of shut them down ahead of time or before they started to flood the board. That's another thing, though. If you can't do that right away and you even get a couple of the extra soldiers, you can keep swinging in over and over again because, yeah, they can chump block a couple of them or, like, block and kill a couple of them. But you keep, you know, creating more and more of an army. So it yeah. was, you you got snagged on land. And I think that's the only reason why this worked out the way it did. But it's going to have a chance. That deck is, is going to have a chance to redeem itself. Because we are going to be doing a loser's bracket with this. So the next match that you guys are going to see is either going to be the loser's block bracket, which is going to be Knight's Charge versus... Something Hunger. Uh, something hung, Savage Hunger, I believe. Savage Hunger. And then um, we're going to do the finals, which is going to be... Uh, fairy schemes versus uh, this deck, which is called once again Wild Bounty. Great memory, but it's short. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you the option uh, as to which deck, because normally we play the deck that we've we've won with, but, but when we don't win, but when you don't win, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so you'll I, I will give you the option. You don't have to decide right now, but I'll give you the option as to which deck, either Fairy Schemes or um, Wild Mana, Wild Wild Stallions. What was it called? Wild Wild Bounty. Uh, I read it about ten seconds ago. Of course, I don't remember it. So if you want Fairy Schemes or Wild Bounty, which one, which one you prefer? You can take some time to think about it. You don't have to think about it right now. Um, folks, if you want to give him some advice, let me know in the comment section or let Travis know in the comment section which one you guys would like to see him play. Just don't say mulligan more. Or <laughs> mulligan less. Because I didn't even have a mulligan this time. So yeah, so I'm not sure which one if we're going to do the loser's bracket first or the, the championship round, but we are going to be doing that. And then we're going to be getting back to the Planeswalker deck showdown. We're going to be finishing that off because we just have two matches left. We have um, Moo versus Vivian. Whoever wins that is going to face against Domri, and that's going to be the finals of the Planeswalker deck showdown. And then we'll have another battle of champions with that. And then after all that, we'll finally be getting back to the guild kits, folks. Domri and those three one boars. Yes. He's going to ride those boars to victory, I think. Yeah, I Maybe think not. Domri, I'm, I, I'm, I'm still hopeful for Moo. I really want a blue deck to do really well. Just uh, in Planeswalker decks, yeah. yeah. Like in these decks, blue does great, right? Apparently. Because they, get, they give you all the tools you need, but... Uh, Travis, is there anything else you'd like to say before we end this episode? No, no. No? This is a lot of fun. I do still really enjoy Brawl, even though, uh, <laughs> sadly, Travis, you've been having a bit of rough luck with it. But uh, thank you, though, still, oh, for God. coming out in this cold, cold November day. It's already starting off pretty cold here in Winnipeg. So, uh, When's supposed to have November rain? Is that a thing? November rain only in, only in California, really, oh. or other warmer areas like Florida, I guess, as well, too. But uh, Or in uh, Guns N' Roses songs. That's it. So... Thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you all in the next episode.